Good morning, everyone. All of a sudden, coronavirus has come back and has been attacking us in Sydney. We all now have to take extra caution, whatever we do and wherever we go, especially where many people are gathered. Hopefully, this situation will get better and we gone soon, but you never know. Let's keep praying and listening to what God has to say to us in this situation. I'd like to strongly encourage you to wear masks uh, during the service, whether you want to sing or not. And uh, you will need to wear masks if you want to sing. For about nine months, our church band promised uh, couldn't uh, lead us in praise and worship. Now, I believe they have saved a lot of energy <laughs> and uh, thankfully they are ready to lead us in singing at the right time of the year. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 to 5 says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Through Him all the worlds were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. The Word in this passage is, of course, Jesus Christ. Let's commence our worship with joy to the world. Yeah. 
heavenly king, yet born of Mary, Jesus Christ, Son of God. We praise and worship you. Eternal word, your child without speech. Jesus Christ, Son of God, we praise and worship you. Robed in glory, yet wrapped in infant's cloth. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we praise and worship you. Lord of heaven and earth, yet laid in a manger. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we praise and worship you. We thank you for being our wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. At this Christmas season, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness. As you sent your messengers, the prophets, to prepare the way of salvation, so prepare our souls to meet you and help us to pursue those things that will nurture faith in you. Make us conscious of your presence with us now as we celebrate the coming of your great salvation. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. The first reading for this morning comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they, are, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down, and they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So the Lord had his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Amen. Siem Jolici, Hawaii and Major. Stars in the 
comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This is the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth, Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby trapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. May the Lord add to this reading of God's holy word. Amen. Out of Bethlehem one will come. One who will be ruler over all. Let us join and see the little town of Peter.
morning, everyone. I was just wondering why face recognition won't work this morning. <laughs> uh, we have a few announcements. Um, and before I get to the announcements, I just wanted to thank the three behind us because during the time of COVID, we've been continually getting all the notices, particularly Sheena and Pete for putting my notices in. This is that, so thank you. And for uh, the children stuff that we continue to get during the week. So thank you to you guys. Um, just a note, um, God willing, we'll have a Christmas service uh, on Friday at 10 o'clock. So uh, let's continue to pray that the uh, COVID doesn't continue to shut things down as it is happening in the northern beaches. We will be on Christmas Day, as we've always done, uh, have a Prez Aid collection. Now, thanks to almost everybody in the congregation, everybody has been doing a lot of the online um, giving. And we can continue to do that. Uh, you can designate your collection on Christmas Day for Prezo, and then the treasurer will make note of that. However, if you do choose, we will have a retiring offering, offering on the 25th at the door for those that want to leave it in there. So if you leave it in an envelope, just mark Prezo. We will make sure that it is counted and collected. And those counting will wear gloves and a mask as part of the counting process. So we're doing that for the Prezo collection on the 25th. The COVID team uh, met on, um, on Wednesday and I thought I'd just share a few of the updates and uh, one of the things that we did want to note is that you will see um, that there has been relaxing of rules and then all of a sudden there's been a closing and the COVID committee want to continue to keep the distancing um, and it becomes important to everybody's health. So I do ask you to think about your neighbour, think about the person that you're with can I keep my distance, make sure that we keep the distance and keep everybody safe so that we can continue to keep the services going. I uh, reminder to everybody, please make sure that you sign in um, and let us know that you are at the service if there is any risk that we have to follow up. Moses has already mentioned around the singing and we do encourage people to wear masks, particularly at this time at the moment. Um, what I would like to remind you is at the end of the service, the uh, two people at the back will come around and give you um, a cloth just to wipe up, wipe the area and once you have that then leave. It serves two purposes, one to keep the church clean and secondly so that as you have finished we can have an orderly departure out of the church so that we don't congregate and again breach the one and a half metre rules. The last thing I wanted to mention is we have been having morning tea and you'll see in the notices, I encourage everybody to join us for morning tea. We're not going to have morning tea today um, and we do ask that you just um, keep an eye out. We will let you know how we go with the rain outside and with the COVID restrictions that continue to tighten up. We're not going to have morning tea after the service. So we do apologize for that. The last notice is you will see on the email that comes out and we will be printing uh, the new book of family worship for 2021. So there's a link that we're sending out to everybody that will be on the uh, notice sheets that you will get today. And we will have books um, that we will print for those that want the actual hard copy books. So uh, um, I hope to have those on Friday. If not, we will have them on Sunday. Um, I think that's it for me. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Um, we're going to sing for you now an item called Peace is Comfort. Uh, feel free to sing along, but um, don't have to sing.
Right. God of love, Father of all, the darkness that covered the earth has given way to the bright dawn of your Son. Make us a people of this light. Make us faithful to your word that we may bring your life to the waiting world. Let the just rejoice, for their justifier is born. Let the sick and infirm rejoice, for their saviour is born. Let the captive and the slave rejoice, for their redeemer is born. Let free men rejoice, for their master is born. Let all Christians rejoice, for Jesus Christ is born. Eternal word, you became flesh and dwelt among us because of your great love for mankind. Though you were God, you humbled yourself out of love for your creation. Being born as a man, you took on our weakness so that we may share in your glory. We praise you for creating man and still more for restoring him in Christ. May we stand firm in all your spiritual resources. May our minds be set on you and your grace. May our righteousness be fully assured in Christ, and may we be ready to serve you as we live and speak for you. Heavenly Father, you created each one of us as individuals. You made us all with different gifts. We thank you for these gifts that are so much part of who we are. May we remember that every single one of us is special to you, that we are each fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. May we always exercise these gifts in the service of the gospel. Loving Father, help us remember the birth of Jesus and the reason that he came, that we may share in the song of the angels, the gladness of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. Lord, we bring before you those families who remain strangers to your grace still. Continue to draw them by your spirit, and in your mercy and love turn their feet from the current ways. Lead them along the road that leads to heaven and eternal life. We pray for all those who are lonely or suffering at this time of year, and we pray that you surround them with your eternal love, that they may find comfort and peace in you. We pray all this with faith and love, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Let's uh, join in singing Hark the Herald Angels.
I told you our band has saved energy for nine months and that they are showing it. <laughs> In December, shopping centers display nativity scenes. And many churches display nativity scenes too. Hollywood has even gotten into the act, the nativity story. Most nativity scenes, along with the shepherds and some other animals, like donkey, camels, and sheep, and, uh, and of course the star, and Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus in the manger have three noble figures standing there, the Magi, the wise men. While that makes for a beautiful scene, this was originally created in 1223, the, the nativity scene. However, it is biblically incorrect. I've looked for a nativity scene that is biblically accurate on the website. I googled it for an hour, but there was none. We have sung so many Christmas hymns today, but many of those words and lyrics need to be revised. That's what I was going to uh, talk about this morning. First of all, well, you'll be surprised to hear this. The wise men were not there. The wise men were not there. There is no way to prove there were three either. History and tradition say there were three because they brought three gifts. That doesn't mean there were three men. Could be two men or could be five men. We have, we, we have no clue how many wise men were there. The Bible doesn't say the number of the men. They were the learned men, philosophers, devoted to astronomy and to medicine. They were great men, well-educated people. They lived in Persia and Arabia. That's why they were called to come from the East. They realized that the baby of whom they had heard was far superior to them. Position, power and prestige make no difference in the presence of the Savior and the Lord. No matter who they were, no matter how great they were, they were never at the scene of the manger. I'm sorry to tell you this, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you from the Bible. When Jesus was an infant baby, when Jesus was born and lying in, uh, in the manger, there were no wise men. The journey was so long and they had to follow the star. This star was a sign that the Messiah had already arrived. By the time they arrived, Jesus was nearly two years old. He was not an infant baby. And you know how two years old toddlers are like. And Jesus was living in a house according to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, verse 11. And there was no animal present. Well, you'll be surprised to hear this too. The presence of a manger seems to indicate the presence of cattle. Traditions say Jesus was born in a barn or a stable, and these were all places where farm animals would be located. But Jesus was likely born in the lower portion of a common Jewish home. If you look at uh, this part, that part, um, homes in, in those days were constructed with ground level animal pens as the first floor. First floor with the people living quarters built just above. The animals were kept close 
and uh, and that they were separate at night when people was asleep. So Jesus, Mary, and Joseph might have used that space, kitchen, or storage, or somewhere around there. They were not sleeping with animals. Also, remember that, that these were Jews who lived with strict religious guidelines for cleanliness. They never slept with animals, never in the stable. <laughs> The Bible never says there were animals at the scene, so we don't need to assume there were. Jesus was absolutely placed in a manger, but there is no evidence he was born in a stable. There was no star either. There was no star. On the night Jesus was born, there was no star. It came later. Maybe one or one and a half years later, only to the wise men. The shepherds who were watching their fields by night did not see a star. What they saw were the angel and the heavenly host, not a star. That's what Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 8 to 14 says. There was no angel either. There is no mention of angels at the nativity scene in the Bible. Their role was to meet the shepherds and tell them about the birth of Messiah. Angel was not there. So, no wise men, no animals, donkey, camel, sheep, no star, no angels. Just baby Jesus, Mary and Joseph and a couple of shepherds. That is the biblically accurate nativity scene. And that's what I couldn't find on the internet. Let me give you a bonus. None of this happened in December. Shepherds would not be watching their fields by night in December. It's winter in Israel. It's too cold. They did it from April to September, but not in December. None of this happened on December 25th. December 25th was chosen by the Roman churches as it was the day to worship the sun god and the most popular time of the year. And the Western churches have just adopted this date and idea and concept to celebrate the Christmas day. So what's the point of all these things I have mentioned this morning? Let me conclude. What gets lost on most people when it comes to the nativity is just what it is we actually celebrate at Christmas. The birth of Jesus was an event of a great moment, worthy of the divine interposition in directing the wise men to see the Messiah, see the truth. It is what drove the shepherds to rush to tell people about what they had seen and heard. It was actually the baby and nothing else typically associated with the nativity scene that was most important. Christ Jesus was the God of the Old Testament. In the New Testament, here he was in the flesh. Teaching forgiveness and love with the gentle command to come, follow me. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The eternal God came down to the lowest place to take human nature. The Son of God became a sinner so that sinners could become sons of God. He was the creator of all things. He subjected himself to the same creative process that all people are subjected to in coming to this life. He came to change the world and he did just that. 
2,000 years ago, the wise men came to worship him and gave him precious gifts. Let's worship him too in our daily lives and give all things we've got, our hearts, our lives, our time, and our all. Let's pray. Father, we celebrate the birth of Christ because He is our mighty Savior, the bringer of forgiveness. The one who has made peace through His blood shed on the cross. In Christ, You have provided a way for sinful people to return to You, our Holy God. Friendship with you is what we now enjoy. Indeed, adoption into your family as one of your own sons and daughters. Glory be to you, our Father, for such a great deliverance achieved in the sending of your Son to be our Saviour, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let us uh, join in singing our final song, O Holy One.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. That completes the service for this evening. For this morning. Please um, just make sure you uh, grab a wipe and clean up and uh, we'll close the music for you.